Many materials end up in landfills across this country, but certain things like used wood can actually have a second life. We're teaching you how biochar is becoming more and more popular and why some experts say we need it on a larger scale. Retrieved as trash and unloaded as treasure, piles of dead wood are dropped off at this facility in Berthoud, Colorado, north of Denver, for an opportunity at a second life. What biochar now does is we take non-merchable waste wood and other organic matter, and we convert it through a chemical reaction called paralysis into a pure carbon. James Gaspard is the CEO of Biochar Now. We're taking a product that has no other market. We're creating a market for it. So at this site, we take clean wood, non-merchable clean wood, which would be like pallets and crates, dead trees and forest fire debris. We take in wood that no one else can use. But the biochar process can be used with materials beyond that list. At other facilities, we're approved to take in treated woods. Uh, we have a facility that's taken in major railroads, cross ties, and we convert it into the same carbon. We can take in telephone poles, we can take in painted woods, old uh, fence, fencing that's been treated. Once the wood is collected, it's shredded and put into kilns with little to no oxygen. This thermal decomposition process turns the matter into a solid form of carbon, which prevents emissions from entering the atmosphere. So if they don't come here, the most you could do with them is put them in landfill, which would then turn to methane, which is a lot worse than anything. For every ton of carbon we produce, we create three tons of carbon credits. So for every ton of carbon we produce, we literally sequester three tons of carbon dioxide that would have went into the atmosphere. As a scientist and professor at Colorado State University, Francesca Catrufo has been studying the benefits of biochar for years. So it's not just the carbon benefits that char can uh, offer, but it's uh, a number of environmental and uh, benefits uh, that touch on water, fertility, contamination, and so forth. She explains biochar can be beneficial in agriculture. Farmers use heavy machinery along with fertilizer and manure to grow their crops. Those processes allow greenhouse gases to get released into the atmosphere. Current research says biochar is one of the best proposed management practices for achieving zero emissions in combination with other efforts. So I think that biochar can be one of the many interventions that are needed, but there are many interventions that can be uh, and need to be put in place as soon as possible because the problem is serious. Beyond farming, biochar can be used in a multitude of products, including plastic and concrete. The solutions do exist. They just need to scale. But in order for it to be a realistic solution, both Catrufo and Gaspard say the net needs to be wider. Basically, to make an impact, we're going to need it to be at the gigaton level. We have the sales pipeline to support that kind of carbon removal. Now it's just scaling up, so you would have hundreds of these locations around the world and then you would basically be removing gigatons of carbon from the atmosphere every year. Jesse Cohen, Scripps News, Berthoud, Colorado.